Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweet Command video. So in this video we're going to be dismantling this Bowers and Wilkins centre speaker. So what we have to do is we have to remove these. These are not magnetic, these rings that are around the front of them. So we've got uh, a load of Allen key bolts around those. Same with these ones. Again, they're Allen key bolts. Right. So we'll put those to one side there for a minute. Now we need to um, get the Allen keys, which are over here. Find them. Now this is the set. So we need to find the right, correct size which I have a feeling is this one. There we go. So we're going to start on doing all these. So as I say, this, this box is also going to be veneered in walnut. So I popped around to the veneer hub today and they were shut. So um, rang them up to find out they'd moved up the road. But... Um, can't pick no veneer up until Monday. Right. Now with these rings off like this, I could have just masked up over the front of them, but I don't want to get any damage on the drivers. Best to not, not do that really. Best to remove them. And then we can take a look at what the crossovers like in the inside on these as well because it's uh it's good to see how much what you get for the money as well so this this material is uh called a continuum driver material um i think that's what they call it anyway don't hold me to that but i'm sure it's a continuum driver and it's a sort of woven fabric material it's not woven Kevlar, it's uh, it's another type of material. But I actually think that the paper cones always sound the best in my eyes. Um, I do like the paper cones. I mean, those cones that are on the Russ Andrews speakers that I inherited from my uncle. Now, that's an excellent company that make those called Precision Devices. And they really do do nice stuff there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove all of these first before we go too far. Try not to make any damage to anything. So easy to slip and to damage a, uh, a cone. Right, so it's this one now, and then we're going to see how the, once we've got these out, we can see how the tweeter is fixed in place. Now, I'm not sure whether that ring comes off there or whether it's screwed in from the other side, but we'll see. So these are all new to me, never taken anything like this out before, so I have no idea how this goes. I'm just doing it off the cuff on this video. Um, as you will know, most of my videos are off the cuff. I don't, I don't practice things. We're all learning together on the job as we go along. That's all a part of the audio file journey. And if we slip and damage something, you'll see. Well, hopefully we won't. That's, we don't want to do that because we want to keep it in uh, tip-top condition. Right, so this has got a front grille you can put on this as well, on this speaker, this centre speaker. It'd be interesting to see what these would sound like if you had two of them and used them as uh, normal hi-fi speakers. But 
whether they're tuned slightly different and they're really more pushed towards home cinema and they wouldn't sound very good as uh, as hi-fi speakers if you had two of them i don't know right so now we've got that out like this now this is the hardest part now so what i'm going to do is hopefully just try to lift those up now with a, uh, a fine screwdriver just under there slightly to try to lift it there we go that, that should come out never mind we don't want to I don't want to damage anything. Very easy to damage stuff when you're doing this. Right, okay, so we've got that up like so. There we go. So now we've got to take these. Um, these off again. So what I find is it's always good to use some small. Some small. Um, long nose pliers to take those off and we'll have a set somewhere in here which I can't find at the moment so I'm going to attempt to do it with these with these pinchers there we go that's one off so this has got a very strong magnet on there That's, that's strong like that one's off so there we go that's the uh, center woven material woofer off put that round there now what I need to do is to try to find these long nose pliers I put them in here earlier on now I can't find them Not there, so let's go and have a look over here. Right, okay, can't find those, so we'll have to. Right, so let's just try to remove these ones now. They're, they're both the same, the way they go up. There we go. Being paper. Okay, so these are the two. Sort of base drivers there really that one's off there we go that's one of the uh the paper drivers show you the underneath of it pretty weighty and heavy it's got a massive magnet on the back there okay so we'll put that one down there so this is the the tweeter there so I've got to try to work out how to remove the tweeter. Um, get that right under there again. Lift that one up. That's better. That's got a bit more. That's it. So I have nice gold connectors on here, gold plated connectors. The spades on the end of these these uh, drivers, these woofers. So I'll we'll put that down there as well. Okay, and now what we need to do is to try to work out how to get this this tweeter off. Now I'm just going to think that it's probably going to be. Right, okay, so that doesn't want to come off like that. So, whether it's got some sort of clip on the back here, it feels like that probably pulls down somehow. Hmm. This is going to be a bit more difficult. I don't want to damage anything here.
So if you see all these ones, they just pushed into these little um, Very interesting. Oh, here we go. That's it. It's up. Really on toe. Right, we've got it up now. So it just was in place there. So now we need to do is just do undo some screws here. As I say, I've never took one of these apart. I've never did it before the video, so I had no idea how it goes. So you have to bear with me. All I'm going to do is to take all these out. It's a long old screw in there. Right, swig of tea. Now I'll give you a close up inside this box in a minute to show you the amount of uh, what goes into this. Looks pretty well made again. Although. I have a feeling this box may be made of MDF and not of uh, birch ply as the more expensive boxes were made of. But I could be wrong. I'll just get to this. There we go. Right, so we've got that up there. And this is the tweeter. Which looks quite a nice tweeter. There we go, look. That's the tweeter there. They seem to like this technology with the bit off the back there. So that's that. So let's just, we're packed out with polyester again in there. Um, so we're going to leave that into that section. And then we're going to see if we can show you the crossover inside. So the crossover's in this part. Right. Okay. So. Not sure whether we can see in here. We're going to have to put this on its side. So here you can see the crossover in there. It's going to be awkward to remove that. So I'm probably not going to remove that. Um, we'll probably keep that inside there. Uh, these are the base ports that you can see that go straight through the cabinet. Okay, there's a flange on this side as well. Uh, they seem to use this dimple technology on their ports. So, uh, same with that side as well. And they're using the polyester in there. As I say, I don't really like using the polyester. Uh, this is what you get inside a continental quilt. Okay, I prefer using a natural product, more of a wool felt. Because I always feel that it sounds better. But, you know... Bowers and Wilkins are a big company, so they, they they may it may be that they just can't afford to put that in there because it makes it too expensive. So let's uh, take the back look at the back now. So I'm going to just start undoing the screws on the back of the uh, the binding posts here. Now I did want to move remove these. They look like they're going to be very difficult to uh, to get out the box because it would make it so much easier for doing the walnut veneer. But uh, unfortunately, I have a feeling they're not gonna come out without damaging it too much. So I'm gonna have to be very careful. There we go. Right, okay, so that's out of here. So now what I've got to do is just remove these again See, these are definitely a cheaper model than the, uh, the 804s. When you look at the 804s compared to these, they're, they're made a lot different. Um, the quality is so much better on the 804s. OK, 
cabinetry was uh, a lot stronger. So I found the long nose pliers, the little pliers, they work really well to get these out. They just, just put those onto there and then wobble it. There we go, that's off. So what I've got to remember is the black and the red are at the top and the blue and the brown are at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that now with some masking tape. So I've just marked it with a bit of uh, masking tape there, black and red. Obviously, I know it's that is self-explanatory, but the two at the bottom are different. And the only good part about it is they have different size spades, so you know exactly what goes into where. So, but I wouldn't say these were, they're quite a nice binding post, but they're not gold plated at all. And um, I wouldn't say they were the best, really. So, so I think it's, um, I think that's it for this video. So I definitely can't get the ports out. So what I'm going to have to do is get the diameter of it. Well, I'll show you when I do the video. And we're going to have to cut two holes in the veneer very precise to get it over those two, um, two ports. So um, uh, interesting video again. Always interesting to see what they put inside these speakers. I mean, when you think about a lot of the uh, the budget speakers, there's nothing inside them at all, hardly. It's very basic. So, uh, again, just normal PVC wire insulated, just probably copper PVC insulated wire, which um, never the best. I always think that uh, a nice Teflon insulated, oh no, continuous cast copper, wire would be better and you could upgrade this to those if you took the crossover out but you've got the port in the wad the crossover there if you can see down there and i can't budge those ports at all they're glued in solid so something's going to get damaged if i start pushing it and i don't want to do that um these have only come in for veneering so i don't really want to force the issue with those so uh I think that's it for this video. Uh, coming up, you will see me re-veneer these speakers. We're going to strip the old finish off. I say old finish. It looks in pretty good nick overall. There's one little uh, one little nick on this just under, just there. You probably can't see it on the video. It's a, it, it's a slight bulge on the side. There you go. It's just at the bottom there. If you can see it down around about there. There's a little bulge there which will... Uh, which will go in the um, veneering process. So I'm not sure what sort of lacquer they use on these, whether it's uh, a black pre-catalyzed lacquer or an acid catalyst lacquer. I mean, I know a lot of cars now are being um, sprayed in water-based, believe it or not. Uh, it's all to do with environmental issues, which is good in a way, but a lot of the water-based products I never find come out as good as... Uh, spirit based or cellulose based products in my experience but i haven't tried any of these new state-of-the-art car paints that they're using these days so i couldn't comment on those really but um crossover looks okay in there i wouldn't say it was uh, the best parts but but as a center speaker remember this is a center speaker it's not a hi-fi speaker so I think that's it for this video. So uh, thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified each time I upload a new video. And thank you for watching, guys.